Remember the days when you could just pop the battery out of your phone when it froze? In 2016, Google was mere months away from releasing a revolutionary smartphone that could have changed everything, a phone you'd never have to replace. Just upgrade, piece by piece, like Lego for adults. So why are we all still dropping $1,000 on a new sealed glass sandwich every couple of years? The average person replaces their smartphone every two and a half years. That's billions of devices discarded, most ending up in landfills where they leak toxic chemicals and rare metals. A cycle that's both expensive for us consumers and terrible for the environment. But there was a moment, a brief shining window, when the tech giants almost took us down a completely different path, one where our phones weren't designed to become obsolete. The strange part? People were wildly excited about it, tech journalists couldn't stop talking about it, the YouTube comment sections overflowed with enthusiasm, and then silence. This is the story of the modular phone revolution that never happened. Once upon a time, phones were inherently modular. If your battery died, you'd replace it. Memory full? Pop in a new SD card. But as smartphones evolved, something curious happened. They became increasingly sealed and integrated. Repairability scores plummeted. When something started to fail, it became the norm to replace the whole phone. Then in 2013, a Dutch designer named Dave Hackens uploaded a video that would rack up millions of views in days. His concept was deceptively simple. A smartphone made of detachable blocks. Processor too slow? Swap it out. Want a better camera? Click in a new one. Battery wearing down? Replace just that part. He called it phone blocks and it struck an unexpected nerve. What Hackens didn't know was that in a Google-owned Motorola lab, engineers had already been working on almost the identical concept for over a year. When they saw Hackens' viral explosion, they realized they'd stumbled onto something with massive public appeal. They called their version Project Ara. Named after Ara Knayan, one of its lead mechanical designers, Project Ara wasn't just some pipe dream. It had Google's billions behind it. The concept was elegant. A metal endoskeleton or endo would house swappable modules for everything from the camera to the processor, allowing users to build their perfect phone. But here's where it gets interesting. Google envisioned far more than just camera and battery modules. They imagined glucose monitors for diabetics, pollution sensors for urbanites, night vision cameras for adventurers, modules that didn't even exist yet when the phone launched. A phone where new hardware features could be added years after initial launch? That's unheard of in our top-down tech ecosystem. What made Project Aura truly revolutionary wasn't just its modular concept, but its technical execution. The phone's endoskeleton featured a network of high-speed connectors using a modified version of the UniPro protocol capable of transferring data at up to 11.3 Gbps between modules. Each module contained a tiny microcontroller that enabled hot swapping, meaning you could replace most components without even turning off your phone. The modules connected through electropermanent magnets, allowing them to stay firmly attached without constantly drawing power. Google had even solved one of the biggest challenges, how to make a modular phone that didn't feel like a compromise. By the final prototype stage, an Aura phone was only about 20% larger than a comparable non-modular device, a gap that would have likely narrowed with further development. When engineers speak about Project Aura today, many describe it as the most technically ambitious mobile project they've ever worked on, and one that was significantly closer to market readiness than the public realized. But if Google was all in on Project Aura, with working prototypes by 2015 and a planned commercial release date set for 2017, what happened? And more curiously, why did several other major manufacturers suddenly jump on this modular bandwagon only to jump right back off? While Google was developing Project Aura, competitors weren't sitting idle. LG unveiled the G5 in 2016, a phone whose bottom could slide off to swap different modules, like a camera grip or a hi-fi audio DAC. Motorola released the Moto Z with magnetic Moto Mods that snapped onto the back, including batteries, speakers, projectors, even a Hasselblad camera. The Fairphone 2 took a different approach, focusing on repairability rather than hot swappable features. A phone designed from the ground up to be disassembled with simple tools. Yet something was off about these efforts. None had the ambitious scope of Project Aura. The LG G5 only had two modules before LG abandoned the concept entirely. The Moto Z line soldiered on longer, but the mods were expensive and the phone's design couldn't evolve because it had to maintain backward compatibility. It was as if the companies were hesitantly dipping their toes in the water rather than diving in. And maybe that hesitation was telling. There's something almost tragic about the modular phone movement. It represented a radical vision of consumer electronics, one that prioritized longevity, sustainability, and consumer choice. One where your relationship with your device wasn't a disposable two-year fling. 
Behind the glossy marketing of the latest flagships lies an uncomfortable truth. The smartphone industry thrives on planned obsolescence. When your battery degrades or your screen cracks, the economics heavily favor replacement over repair. In the cobalt mines of the Congo, kids as young as seven are digging up materials for our batteries. And over in Ghana and China, people are breathing in toxic fumes from burning our discarded electronics. The human and environmental price tag of our two-year upgrade habit isn't hidden anymore. It's staring us right in the face. Project Ara and its modular cousins threatened that entire business model. In September 2016, just months before Project Ara's scheduled commercial release, Google abruptly canceled the entire project. The announcement came with little explanation, just a terse statement that the company was streamlining its hardware efforts. Industry insiders whispered about technical challenges, that the data connections between modules weren't reliable enough, that modular phones were inevitably bulkier and less elegant than unified designs, Others pointed to more practical concerns. Would consumers really upgrade individual components or just buy whole new phones anyway? Could a functioning ecosystem of third-party modules ever develop? But perhaps the most damning theory is also the most obvious. Modular phones are terrible for business. A phone that lasts five years instead of two means fewer phones sold. For an industry built on the annual refresh cycle, modularity wasn't just challenging, it was existentially threatening. Unfortunately, no company has cracked the code on how to make sustainable devices as profitable as our throwaway culture. For an industry built on the annual flagship refresh cycle, modularity wasn't just challenging, it was existentially threatening. The dream hasn't completely died. In 2024, we've seen new attempts at modular design with the HMD Fusion and Nothing's CMF Phone 1. Both feature interchangeable back panels and limited modularity. Fairphone continues its mission with the Fairphone 5 promising seven years of software updates and available replacement parts. The right to repair movement has gained momentum with legislation in Europe and parts of the US compelling manufacturers to make devices more repairable. Even Apple, long the poster child for sealed integrated design, now provides repair manuals and parts for some of its devices, though skeptics note the process remains unnecessarily complicated and the inside of every new phone is still a jumble of components glued together, proprietary screws, and parts paired at the software level to discourage third-party repairs. The modular revolution remains almost entirely unrealized. Next time you find yourself dropping a month's rent on a new phone because your old one's battery doesn't last the day, remember, it didn't have to be this way. If you're drawn to the modular vision, options still exist. The Fairphone community continues to grow with their devices designed for repair and longevity. Organizations like iFixit provide guides and parts for DIY repairs. Supporting right to repair legislation through groups like Repaired Org can help shift industry practices and perhaps most importantly, simply keeping your current phone longer and demanding devices built to last sends a powerful message to manufacturers that consumers are ready for change. If you enjoyed the video, please give a like and subscribe. It really helps the channel out. And let me know in the comments, would you have bought a fully modular phone if Project Aura had made it to market?